Is it the end of the Swartzengi volcanic system, the upheaval which started in the 2023 November 10? We had the earthquakes resulting from the North American plate and Eurasian plate being in that system on the Reconis Peninsula and the extension causing earthquakes. The earthquakes which actually created the Atlantic Ocean in the long run had the earthquakes and led to evacuation of the town of the Grindavik, a town, a fishing town, a small town with a population of around 3,000 to 4,000 people, different uh, statistics exist about that, and the creation of the chasms and the cracks in the town. Unfortunately, one person during the repairs of the roads fell into one of these cracks with the machinery and lost his life. Uh, the town is on this practically a rift valley, and that's the reason the harbor exists. Since then, we have several eruptions, and the pattern of the eruptions shows that the vigor and the level of the activity is reduced by each eruption, even the volume of the magma and the duration of it is reduced. So what we are seeing is that a diminishing level of activity in the sourcing volcanic system from the December to January and February and now March 2024, uh, from last year to this year. We are seeing it now. It seems that the last uh, situation we had didn't actually materialize in the early March into an eruption. We didn't see the lava at the surface. There was not enough pressure, probably, and there was not uh, enough the movement of the magma uh, being, you know, uh, able to actually reach the surface through the cracks or melting of the pre-existing cracks reaching the surface. The clusters of the earthquakes you can see in these charts are reduced as the time goes by from the uh, December 2023 to the March 2024. It seems the system is reaching equilibrium. It may not be able to erupt, even if it erupts you know, in the coming days, near the new moon probably, we may uh, see the end of this upheaval, at least for now. Last time we had upheaval in this area was around 800 years ago when the Vikings were arriving and living in that area. It was during the medieval times. We didn't have a living memory of that. The cracks are now getting closed probably in that system. The magma cannot flow. It may eventually solidify under the ground, forming what we call as a lacquer leaf, until later when it erupts again. This is a possibility I'm talking about. It's not certain we in the in the science. We don't be we cannot be always certain. What we are seeing is a transfer of the movement created in the uh, extension of the sourcing volcanic system to the other systems to the east of it. For example, Fegedesfiel and Kristovik and all the others up to the Hengel, which then transfers to the south uh, and the west uh, volcanic zone of the Iceland. Each one of these may erupt on its own time, not necessarily at the same time. So 800 years was its time of the, you know, calm in the sourcing area. We may have another, you know, uh, calm period before another eruption happens somewhere else along this rift. The first one, we may had it in the uh, Swarsengi. Before that, we had also a new system actually developing the Fegeldesville. But that is not uh, in the pattern that I'm talking. We'd, I've covered all of this, trying to show in this cartoon, which is animated, to show you how it is going. The uplift of the mantle due to the thinning of, thinning of the lithosphere uh, leads to the rising of the mantle partial melting of the mantle material, forming a, a magma, and then when the magma is differentiated enough, forming basalt, it can rise to the surface and uh, erupt as a volcano. Usually here we have fissure eruptions, not a stratovolcano. This is a different setting. Migration of the magma also may happen. The uh, sourcing volcanic system and impact on the uh, Grindavik was very well managed by the Icelandic authorities and the people compared to, for example, something recently in Turkey and Syria, which we had uh, uh, earthquakes, large earthquakes in the Richter scale, causing death of uh, probably thousands of people. Destruction was vast. And uh, it didn't make uh, as much as into the news media. And as long as it's finished, the world also forget about it. 
Although we know that, for example, in Syria, it will continue even to be impacted. Even the people after earthquakes were attacked by a neighboring country who bombed their, on a daily basis with missiles and rockets or sometimes weekly basis. Uh, so in that sense, Iceland was very well managed with this. And the media also didn't lose interest in that. And the coverage continued. Uh, for example, the earthquakes in 2004 in the Bam area of Iran uh, was uh, also at the level of the Turkish earthquakes. And it caused a lot of death and destruction. And immediately after that, or just a few weeks or months after that probably, new sanctions were put on the, on the country of Iran by the world powers. And uh, the country con- uh, continued to suffer. Even uh, They were not able to you know, recover from that. In that sense, I think Iceland was really well managed. The situation, the coverage in the media, the control, you know, the way that they directed the media to the, you know, situation uh, in the YouTube, in the, uh, you know, foreign media, even by the Icelandic authorities and their own, you know, efforts to provide the infrastructure, internet uh, uh, connection, uh, hot water system, electricity, all provided at a high standard by the authorities and by the system that was already in place in the infrastructure and everything. And people are very receptive also to the health and safety concerns.